Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, valve adjustments. Okay, this, a lot of you guys know this. There's a, a million ways to do this. Um, I'm going to show you my way when I think it's the easiest and best way. But again, you know, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. A cat doesn't like any of them. Um, but I'm just going to show you my way. Before we get into it, though, I want to talk about push rods. Okay, because push rods determines how we set the valves. Okay, rockers do as well. But for those of you who are not running roller rockers, um, this will apply. Okay, push rods. If you are running dual springs, you should be running chromoly push rods. Well, chromoly does not expand at the same rate as aluminum. So what happens to you is as the engine expands, okay. Chromoly doesn't expand at the same rate and your valves end up getting loose. To make up for this, I normally set my valves at three thousandths when using chromoly push rods. The problem with that is at three thousandths it's really easy to get a tight valve. Okay, so it's, it's catch-22. Chromoly is definitely stronger than aluminum. However, um, you need to adjust your valves all the time. So on a daily driver, I do not set, I do not use chromoly push rods. Okay, I use an aluminum push rod. If it's a bigger engine with heavy duty springs, I will use a 3 8 aluminum push rod so that I get the expansion rate back. If this is a Friday, Saturday night car or a drag car, we got dual springs, we don't have a choice but to run chromoly. And what I do to make up for it, again, is I, I set them at 3 thousandths. This motor we're working on today is going in a sand rail. It does have dual springs, okay? It does have chrome wall push rods. So I will be setting them at 3 thousandths, okay? Those of you with aluminum ones, um, you know, again, set them at 6 thousandths. So, how to get started. Um, the first thing I'll do is pop the cap on the distributor because I want to know where the rotor is, okay? Keep in mind, crank turns twice for every time the cam turns once. Just because you're on TDC doesn't mean you're on number one. Okay, you'll be on either number one or number three. Uh, so, just take it out and make sure the car is in neutral. Um, this is easy, it's on the test stand. Okay, turn the crank over to TDC on your pulley. So TDC should be, this zero on TDC should line up with the split in the case. Then take a look at your rotor. Make sure you're pointing towards number one. If you're pointing towards number three, then just rotate it, you know, 360 degrees. If you're not sure, put your cap back on, follow your wire, you know, over to one and two side. Uh, Volkswagen was very nice in the fact that they labeled the tin for you, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay, next thing to do, blow the valve cover off. This particular engine has bolt-on valve covers. If you have stock valve covers, um, use a screwdriver and undo the bail. Okay, this particular engine has solid shaft rockers and swivel feet adjusting screws. Swivel feet adjusting screws are a little harder to get the feeler gauge in, um, but they are definitely a much better type of adjusting screw. What I do with the feeler gauge is go in here, okay, and slice at it like a piece of, you know, you're slicing a piece of bread. Okay, as you can see, this one's extremely loose, okay. You want to loosen up the jam nut, go in here and tighten it, and you just want it to where you can barely move the feeler gauge in and out. 
For those of you who are not sure how tight, buy yourself a set of step gauges or, okay, so just a drag on there. If you buy step gauges or you can try and take another feeler gauge, like a, you know, if you're doing it six thousandths, try and put a seven thousandths and if it goes in there, well, then you're too loose, okay? So there's that one, okay? Go through, see if there's some play on the intake. Okay, this one's tight. Oh, there we go, I got it. Okay, again, hair on the loose side. Just slight drag or drag in there. When you tighten the jam nut, you do not have to gorilla these things down. Snug is fine. Okay. This particular engine is not aluminum push rods. This engine has nine and a half to one compression and it's got dual springs, but the theory here is the same. As you can see, when I tighten the jam nut, it's pulling it back a little bit, so I'm just kind of inching up on the adjustment. There it is, okay? Okay, that's it. So here's the ticket, here's my little secret. We are done with number one, okay? So now we're gonna turn the engine. Now the firing order goes one, four, three, two. So if you're gonna turn the engine clockwise, you need to go one, come over here, do four, then three, then two. What I do, because I've already got this valve cover off, normally I'm laying underneath the car. I don't wanna get you know, both sides going. But I'll turn the engine backwards do that, it just so happens, you're going to be doing one, then two, then three, then four. Kind of nice. Okay, plus, I can button this side up before I go to this side. So turn the crank counterclockwise to VDC. Again, if you're not sure, come up, look at your rotor, and follow your wire. Now we're on number two. Check to see if we got any play. That has no play, so that valve's tight. So it's this one. Take that back. Okay, so that one's got a slight drag on it already, so it's fine. This one's a hair loose. I want to say what you're setting the gap to again. If you again, if you're running Crow Molly push rods, okay, you need to. I set my gap at three thousand, and that's what I'm doing on this one. Okay, on stock engines, anything with an aluminum push rod, I set them at six. The other thing that I did haven't mentioned. That's important is you gotta do it stone cold. Okay, so now I have a slight drag on that one. I'm good to go. Okay, so this side's done. On these covers with this channel style gasket, the trick here is Run the bolts in until the washer touches the gasket, and then one more turn. No more than that. If you tighten it any more than that, you'll rip the gasket.
So again, go until the washer hits the, the cover, and then one more turn and that's it. Any more than that, it just starts ripping the gasket. Okay, so then you would turn this back to TVC. Again, counterclockwise. And now we would come over here. If you notice, my rotor's pointing 180 degrees from number one. Okay. This one is extremely loose. So is that one. Okay, this is a brand new engine, so this is not uncommon. Everything needs to find a home. Okay, there it is. Okay, and it's a feel thing more than anything. Okay, there it is. Now we're at three, so that one's done. Again, same thing. Go back, counterclockwise. Okay. Last one. Okay, again, super loose. Yep, both of those are loose. I've tried all kinds of fancy valve adjusting tools. I find it works best just with a short, stubby screwdriver. If you see me shaking, it's because it's colder than hell in here right now. Okay, there it is. Slide drag. There it is. Okay. Same thing here.
washer hit the cover. One more turn. There's the cover. One more turn. That's it. Done. Okay, so now let's talk about stock valve covers because that's what most of you guys have. Here's what I do. So here's the stock cover. Okay? Clean your gasket out. Clean, every, clean your cover, obviously. This one's not clean, but just for demonstration. Then what I do is I take the gasket and I'll throw it in the cover like this. And then I'll take this product here called Gasket Cinch. Okay? It has a brush applicator. Okay? And what I will do is I'll go around the whole gasket, okay? Then, here's the trick. Take it with it, you know, all that gooey stuff on there. Flip it over in the gasket. Now it's glued to the cover. Then I take my gasket cinch and I only go from here down to here and then clip it on. Try not to clip it on with your fingers because it's gonna pinch and hurt like hell, okay? So use a screwdriver, knock the bail back up, the reason I don't go all the way up the top is when I take this off, I don't want to be scraping cork off the top and where it's going to leak is on the bottom. So there you have it. Any questions? That's it. So I hope this helps. Um, you should be adjusting your valves probably you know, anywhere from three to five thousand. Um, as a general rule, personally, I adjust them more during the summertime than I do the wintertime because, you know, it gets hot. Um, the other thing, if you have a brand new engine, okay, as you saw, this is on a test stand. We fired it up earlier um, and then let it cool down. Um, then we'll adjust the valves. We'll fire it up again um, and adjust the valves. Uh, once this goes in the vehicle, you got to adjust the valves, take it for a short time. I don't know, 10 miles, 15 miles, adjust them again. If you find that they're way off, keep doing that till everything finds a home. Once it finds a home, then, you know, those of you with single springs and aluminum push rods, again, every every three to five thousandths, those of you with chrome molly push rods and stuff, I hate to say this, but you should be adjusting them every time you take the car out. This is a sand rail engine, again, this gentleman will be adjusting his valves, you know, pretty much once a day, you know, adjust them, go out, have fun, come back, get up in the morning, do it again. It's just, you know, that's the nature of the beast. So, that's it. That's all I got.